The House voted today to condemn anti-Semitism, discrimination against Muslims, and other bigotry. The resolution is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Though it didn't name her, the resolution is a rebuke to freshman Democrat Ilhan Omar. A Somali-American congresswoman from Minnesota, Omar has criticized Israel and its influence, giving voice to long-simmering concerns on the left. But in the process, she stumbled into anti-Semitic tropes, stereotypes of Jews as money-obsessed, manipulative, and disloyal. Do you think that Ilhan Omar understands why her comments were problematic? And what happens if this happens again? Thank you for the question. Uh, I don't. I don't think that um, that the congresswoman is uh, uh, perhaps appreciated the full weight of how it was heard by other people. Although I don't believe it was intended in any anti-Semitic way. But the fact is, if that's how it was interpreted, we have to remove all doubt. Pelosi and other mainstream Democrats view support for Israel as sacrosanct. But there's a block of progressives who are standing up for Omar. They say a dialogue about Israel's right-wing leadership should not be off limits. Republicans are expected to keep putting Democratic support for Israel on trial. One way they'll do it, by pushing anti-BDS laws. Uh, she continues to display anti-Semitic uh, remarks, comments. These are her beliefs. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment and Sanction. It's a consumer boycott of Israeli-made products. It's designed to punish the country for its treatment of Palestinians. Free, free Palestine! Israel calls the campaign anti-Semitic. So far, 26 states have passed anti-BDS laws, which force anyone who does business with the government to pledge not to participate in the movement. One of them is Arkansas. Alan Leverett founded the Arkansas Times 45 years ago. It's been my life's work. I decided when I was 22, I wanted to devote my life to Arkansas. I wanted to make Arkansas a better place to live. The Times is Arkansas's left-leaning magazine. It's free. The publication survives on ad revenue. But this revenue stream is being threatened by a 2017 law that says state contractors have to sign a loyalty pledge to Israel. Could you explain to me from the beginning so how that happened? One of our biggest advertisers and oldest advertisers is uh, uh, University of Arkansas, uh, Plasky Technical College. And so in November, the marketing people who we've worked with for years said, you know, this the purchasing director is requiring us to get you to sign this. And, you know, at first I just sort of lost it. And, uh, but this time it just kept coming. And finally I said, well, there's not going to be a signed pledge. See if I can find her. And then we'll... The college buys ads in his paper with state money, making Leverett a state contractor. You refused to sign it? Yeah. And what did that cost you? Well, so far about $15,000. And uh, it could get worse. Y'all all should tell Alan that you think this, the printing job looks like shit. We've been running a break-even proposition, and sometimes not even a break-even proposition from in some years. So $15,000 is, that's somebody's job. Despite the cost, Arkansas Times employees support his decision to fight the law. Just simply to stifle dissent, and that's un-American and, we think, unconstitutional. If you were to combine all of the revenue that you make from contracts with the state, how much would you stand to lose if About they About 10%. 10%. It's a lot of money. So even though the paper doesn't participate in BDS, it and the ACLU sued the state over the law. You say it's unconstitutional, why? Well, because it's a violation of freedom of speech. So we're gonna let the state, whether it's the federal state or the state of Arkansas, influence a political position of a newspaper in, retire in return for money. Okay, is that, is that a good idea? It's hard to trace the origin of these anti-BDS laws, but they seem to be the result of coordination between lobby groups, some lawyers, and pro-Israel legislators like Bart Hester, state Senate Majority Leader, lifelong Republican, and dedicated Christian. He sponsored the Arkansas bill. There are other states that have sponsored bills like this, and they're strikingly similar, almost word for word, like <laughs> Texas, Louisiana, and I'm wondering, 
basically who's behind authoring these bills. No one came and pursued me to author this bill, but whenever you decide you're going to do it, you start researching what other states are doing, if it's working. You know, you always, uh, I like to check with groups like IPAC, see what their thoughts are, and if they've got any, uh, what, we, what we call template legislation that seems to be working for them. APEC, the American Israeli Public Affairs Committee, is a powerful lobbying group that pushes pro-Israel policies in U.S. politics. Did your Christian faith have an influence on the authorship of this bill or the sponsorship of this bill? Yeah, I, I think it absolutely did. Again, I hope that my Christian faith uh, influences everything in my life. Uh, and I'm a believer in the Bible, so I absolutely believe the Jewish people are God's chosen people, and therefore I have a responsibility to benefit them where, where possible. Foreign policy is largely the purview of the federal government. Why do you feel the need to enact legislation on the state level? It's more than just uh, the boundaries in the land in Israel, right? We, I believe that it ex expands to the Jewish people. You know, when we see on a federal level uh, where they, when they're going to sanction uh, Iran, right, they, ha they have the right to do that as a country. I think as a state, we, we felt like we had the right to, to make a statement as well. But you're not sanctioning another country. You're sanctioning your own citizens. Right, uh, we are. We're, we're, we're sending a message that says, hey, we, we are not going to stand by in Arkansas and let people take our taxpayer money against something that our overwhelmingly amount of our taxpayers don't believe in. You can choose to boycott Israel and, and be in Arkansas. We're not taking away your First Amendment freedom of expression at all. Just we're not going to do business with you at that point. If Hester wanted to talk to Arkansans about supporting Israel, he wouldn't have had to go far. The leader of Little Rock's Jewish community opposes BDS, but he's also against the legislation. I am the rabbi of the largest Jewish congregation in Arkansas by a long shot. And I'd never heard from Senator Hester about this law and whether I thought that it was in the best interest of the Jewish people of Arkansas. This law has nothing to do with the Jewish people of Arkansas. I'm a vigorous opponent of BDS. And we, the American Jewish community and Israel supporters here in the United States are successfully winning the battle against BDS. What we don't need is the power of the state to help us fight this battle. I'm grateful to the Arkansas Times for bringing the case. I think they're a great plaintiff because they don't engage in any boycott of Israel and they're being forced to sign something that frankly a newspaper shouldn't be asked to sign. What this does is it gives the state a certain amount of control over the free press. Okay, all right, thank you, Donnie. All right, uh-huh, bye-bye. The Times has now gone four months without one of its biggest advertisers. In January, a federal judge threw out the Times lawsuit, saying boycotts aren't protected by the First Amendment. The paper is appealing. They're saying, you got the freedom, you don't have to sign it. Yeah, we just but, don't. But, but yeah. if, you, if, if you choose not to sign it, you just can't do business with us. Yeah, That's well, all. I'll tell you what. I'm a citizen, okay? I pay taxes in this state, and, I, and I, this is my home. And no, they do not have a right to punish me for exercising my constitutional right to be silent. In this, in this instance, it's just to be silent. We don't take a position on this. Our job is to write about Arkansas. We're a lot more interested in Medicaid expansion here in Arkansas than we are what's going on in Jerusalem. Is there a tipping point where you recognize if you don't sign these pro-Israel pledges that your publication is gonna sink? Could be. And would you be willing to sign it then? I don't know. I've got responsibilities, and I've got responsibilities to these people here at this organization. I'm not looking to be a martyr, and, uh, but I am willing to uh, appeal and go through this process and let this go on for, for the next year. And uh, I'm gonna do the best I can is all I can say.